I'm live. I don't believe you. <laughs> What's happening, y'all? It is Tuesday, around 12.45 on this lovely, smoky afternoon in Los Angeles, California. There are fires in Ventura, Santa Barbara area. And San Corita. Yeah, that's by you, right? Mm-hmm. And so more. When I say fires, I mean like fucking uh, backdraft. The movie fires. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's with the wind, it's all the smokes down here. So people are advised not to be outside. The kids at the school across from my home cannot be outside. I couldn't walk my son out because there's ashes everywhere. Like, my car was covered in ashes. I usually park in the garage, but I didn't last night. I come out just covered in ashes. Smells like, uh, you know, like you've been camping all the goddamn day in oh, all fires. of L.A. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, all good, it'll go away. Um, But for those dealing with the fire, that sucks. I hope you guys figure it out and you stay safe. Um, Yeah, tonight is uh, first live Fire in the Kin quite some time. Brian and I have been on our own, doing our own shows, so we're back together. Of course, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it at the Comedy Store, uh, my favorite place on planet Earth. Um, Yeah, sold out show, packed house, MJ, Chin, you guys will be there, of course. Yeah, Hell yeah. Jim, we were in Ontario last week, huh? Feels like forever ago. Does it really? It feels like it was. <laughs> feels far, it feels to me. really. Yeah. Oh man, not recent. to me. It's all a blur. Feels like yeah. like You're two busy years as ago. Hell, though, that's why. Feels like two years ago. Um, that traffic down to fucking. That's probably the worst for anything I've ever done. I think show wise ever. Ever right? Yeah, ever. Three hours. About three hours. Yeah. About three hours. It took me about three hours because you got to cut through downtown. I mean, it was so bad. It's so all red, red, all red the entire way from here to there. Oof. All yeah, red. I posted a, just a snap of my uh, a screenshot on Instagram of my, what ways, and that was after an hour and 10 minutes in the car. And it was like two hours and 40 minutes left. I was like, mm-hmm. God damn it. And then I, you know, I, my one kind of thing, especially on this diet, I've been keto since the day after Thanksgiving, like strict, strict keto. And the one thing that gets me through it is fluids. So I drink a lot of fluids, uh, cop, all just black coffee, maybe with some almond milk, but especially after um, later in the afternoon, it's just black coffee, uh, a lot of water, um, sparkling waters, flavored sparkling waters, but n- nothing with artificial sweetener or, or sugar, no, no sugar. <clears throat> so I'm constantly hydrated, which means I have to pee all the time. Mm-hmm. And in that traffic, dude, I swear I was like having this debate with myself. I was like, I'm going to piss my pants, but if I stop and be late to the show... Because traffic is so goddamn bad. And I had a venti uh, Starbucks coffee cup. <laughs> you did it? And I'm like, I wonder if that would hold, the, how much piss that would hold. But then what am I going to do with it? Yeah. Am I going to throw a fucking piss bomb out mm-hmm. my window? Not so, good. yeah, you can't do it. No. I don't know if any of the listeners have ever done that, but I don't, I feel like I'd fill that thing up tenfold. That I'd be so dumb and dumber in my car. <laughs> hurry, 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 hurry. You know, like I don't. It would spray I, back in your face. That's how bad it was. I was like, I have to piss in this venti cup. Yeah. Um, I pulled over because I was like, dude, I got to figure something out here. I'm going to piss my pants. I'll risk being late. Or I'll just have Jesus. Shout out to Jesus Trijo, uh, who was uh, my opener. He killed it, obviously. Awesome guy, man. Ridiculous, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, I'll just have him go longer if I was late because I, I literally have to be or I'm going to die. <clears throat> so I pulled off and on my... Map quest. I was like, "Oh, where's a Starbucks?" I was like, "Oh, there's only one point four miles away." I go to get to that Starbucks. Talk about the biggest honey dick of all time. And I'm sure you guys have dealt with this. It doesn't say it's a Starbucks inside the Target, so I'm driving around. Oh, yeah. like, Where the fuck is Starbucks? <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, it's one of those half ass Starbucks. Those aren't real Starbucks employees. No, those that's not real Starbucks coffee. That's all like <laughs> it's second hand. They're the middle Target's the middleman. I just want the legit Starbucks." But I went there, took the biggest piss of all time. Still made the show. Mm-hmm. Was on time. Yeah, early. Yeah, I got yeah, there pretty early. early. But Ontario, that's a it's a giant complex. Yeah, Dave and Buster's <laughs> Nike factory outlet, yep. a Ooh. giant mall. The place was huge. Mm-hmm. I've never been out there besides uh, that uh, the impro- Ontario Improv. But it was cool. Great crowd. Fun. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Huge crowd. Big Brown coming around. Usually it's just the dudes up at the show. A lot of cocks. A lot of <laughs> girls this time. Wasn't there more than usual? A lot of girls. Yes. Sure. Coming around. It's usually a real dick fest at my shows. If you're a lady and you're single, definitely come to one of my shows. But not if it's in Ontario. 
Yeah, it's too far. <laughs> too much traffic. No, if it's Ontario, hey, there's a lot of girls for whatever reason. <laughs> Starting to come around. Usually when it's me and Brian, it's all just certified dick divers. Like tonight, MJ, you're in good hands because if you're looking for a man, there's a bunch of certified <laughs> dick divers tonight. <laughs> There'll be a ton of them. A Yay. ton of them. Yay! <laughs> dudes, 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 dudes. Um, yeah, but I was surprised. Shout out to Ontario. Improv, that was a good time. Definitely be back. We're going to figure something out. I don't know if I can get an Uber chopper to there or in my contract or some shit. But Stay the night before, maybe. God, no way, man. <laughs> oh, no way. Um, would do not want to do that. Uh, but you're, you, sh- and I didn't even ask you to do this. You just, I showed up and you had a camera. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, I'm going to shoot some behind the scenes. I was like, all right, man. It turned out yeah. well. You did good, man. So good. It's just regular behind the scenes, but people seem to dig it. So. It's on the Fire and the Kid uh, YouTube channel right now. I post, I reposted Chin's post. It's the, what'd you call it? Chin's view? Chin cam. Chin cam. Chin cam. <laughs> that makes sense. Behind the scenes. The chin cam. Chin cam. Chin cam. Chin cam. <laughs> From my point of view. Yeah, Chin it's cam. good. I yeah. Like it. I like it, man. People dug it. Cool. Some people are like, I like the video, man. I don't know about the music. Oh, I'm sorry it's not <laughs> fucking Aerosmith. That it's some regular beat. We can pay My bad it's not Adele, sir. We could pay Aerosmith or you hundred thousand dollars to use their music. Yeah, we'll do that next Dude, time. Dude, we, we had that issue when we were doing I think it was Fire and the Kid three D. We wanted to. We shot a rock video, like an '80s hair metal band rock video, and we wanted to use um, that you know that song "Under Pressure." Dun, 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 oh dun, yeah, Queen, right? <laughs> yeah, and so we had Fox at the time who we were working with Fox Sports reach out to him. And they're like, "Yeah, we need six hundred thousand yeah, dollars for you to ridiculous. just sample that." I'm like, "Oh shit!" Dang. So we went with some uh, band that was a friend of our guy uh, who used to work there, mm-hmm. so we didn't have to pay anything. Kind of worked out. Yeah. The song was called Fabulous, if you guys remember. I miss those days. Brian and I have another concept to come out with some stuff like that. So we'll see. Lots lots going on. But it'd be fun, man. It would be fun. And then, yeah, tonight at the Comedy Store and next week I'm back on the road. I'm in Syracuse for one night on December 13th. That's a Wednesday night. Then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two shows a night. I'm in Buffalo. That's Helium in Buffalo. Hopefully it's not too goddamn cold and I can eat, um, well, they can't be fried. They'd have to be grilled on this goddamn diet, buffalo wings. I can eat grilled buffalo wings. Home of the Frank's hot sauce. I can't eat deep fried wings. Can you have it with the skin, though? Yeah, I can have skin. So that's kind of the same. I can't have deep fried, though. The oil. Why? Because they're the, the the they deep fry them and they then they're deep fried in like uh, batter. batter. It's like batter. that's all full carb. But you can deep fry with the skin then, right? Like yeah. like yeah, you could do that. That I would be that. delicious. Like oil. Yeah. Can you do coconut oil and all that? Like? I can do coconut oil like a motherfucker. The, yeah. Mm. It's, it hasn't been too bad. Like yesterday, I was so busy. I was uh, I got I was headed home and it was six p.m. and then it hit me. I'm like, oh, I haven't eaten today. That's awesome. I haven't eaten at all. It, and I had um. I had a the a fat fudge or what the fuck's it called? There's a, there's a fat fudge down there. Yeah, fat fudge. Who I don't have any connection <laughs> to them. I ran to the lady on the street. She sent me some products. I've just always been a fan of their products. When I'm keto, it's by far the best kind of easy snack to to get that keeps you on keto. Yeah, fat fudge. Mm. Um, pH fat. P H A T fudge. Shout out to the uh, fat fudge lady. Who runs it all herself, which is crazy. I think I've talked about that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's all I had yesterday in coffee. Damn. So I feel all right, man. I'm, I'm past the kick. I look at carbs. I don't. There's a place called uh, e- Italy, E A T, okay. Italy, in uh, Century Center, Century City, by mm-hmm. the mall there. And uh, I've never been, but there's a line out the fucking gazoo. And I was there this week and I went in there. And dude, it looks amazing. There it is. Damn, only three and a half stars. I no. think it's a different one. Oh, it is. It That's is Italy, one. LA. But they have like this ridiculous pizza. That was the only time I was like, damn, I want that pizza. <laughs> it's like a thick. Mm, that's it. You know, it's pretty easy, man. As far as diet goes, it's definitely easy to stick to. But don't you miss that stuff? I don't, man. Now I look at it and, I, <laughs> and it makes me think about how sick I would feel if I were to eat it right now. Uh, oh, that's true. I'm good. I'm, I'm past it. I'm pat. Once you're past it, you're solid, man. Yeah. Past not, flu. not like uh, I was gonna have my cheat meal on Friday night, and at Javier's at Mexican place, and I sat down, and I was looking at the tortilla chips. I'm like, God, I don't feel like any of this. I just don't feel like carbs anymore. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I don't need a cheat meal. I haven't cheated or anything. 
I'm just gonna see how long I can ride this out. <clears throat> yeah, Damn, I'm the I same way. Keto. We're all the same <laughs> way, though, right? If you eat yeah. like vegetables and then proteins and then fats, you kind of just don't really you kind of carbs as much anymore. Then the, the sweet tooth, not too bad. Like this, that fat fudge works. There's that cave shake, which I'm on the fence about right now, but they're they're all right. There's so many calories in them. I don't do them late at night. Oh. And then, you know, you get whipping cream, like the the fucking yeah. spray. You can do, you can do that. Yeah. There's like carbs. zero sugar, zero carbs. Mm. I'll get the chocolate one spray in my mouth like a fat kid. <laughs> There's a coconut one cheese whiz. Yeah, they're sure nice. So you can do that for all you keto kids out there. But there was a dude at uh, the Ontario Improv came up was like, dude, uh, I started keto when you started it, and I I was 350 pounds. I'm 100 and I think he's 180 now. What the? Huh? Yeah, wow. look good too. Holy crap! Yeah, I'm like just strict that keto. He goes, yeah, that's all I that's all I've done, man. As far as diet, it's. Super healthy for you, like they said. It mental be, efficiency, yeah. everything yeah. goes up with it. Well, people don't realize keto's not. A, it's not like a fad, or it's not like um, these other. Di- it's literally been around since nineteen thirties. It's mm-hmm. been around for ever. This is nothing new, nothing new at all. Um, but whenever you post about keto or any diet, you get the experts that come out like, "Oh, vegetarian, try this or this or that's." It's not sustainable. Any professional athlete, uh, man, the most successful people I know are keto. <laughs> Whatever that means, I don't know. Uh, it could just be a coincidence. I'm sure they'd be successful if they're eating ice cream sundays every day, but they happen to be pretty smart and they're on keto, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Something to that. Something to that. Um, yeah, so I'm in Syracuse next week. Buffalo Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two shows each night. Let's do this, Buffalo. And then January, I can't believe I'm saying this, the Boston show the night before UFC 220 at the Wilbur Theaters, my First theater in the United States is almost sold out. We're at 800 tickets, and it holds, I think, 1,100. So we are almost sold awesome. out. Um, I will have a special guest there as well, which I'm not going to announce. I mm. will have a special guest open up for me, Ooh. very special guest. Mm. And, um, yeah, hopefully they also book Stipe Francis, uh, which it sounds like they are on that card too, mm. which will help everything. Um, yeah, so that's January 19th in Boston, Get you some. And then the other one that I guess they just announced today, I was waiting on them, is Portland. And it might be my favorite graphic we've done yet for Portland. Um, but it is – hold, please. I don't know why this is taking so long. Apologize. Apologize. I'm in Portland. Finally, I'm in Portland. Solo. January 11th through the 13th at Helium. Portland Live, January 11th, 12th, 13th at the Helium Comedy Club. Tickets are on sale. By the time you guys are listening to this, they will be on the website, TFATK. Portland, come get you some. Let's hipster it out. Whites, whites, whites. Portland, let's do it. Portland, let's do it. Um, that's it, man. That's the runaround. A um, lot going on. This fight, there's a fight. There's a fight, I think, from here on out to the new year every weekend. And then you got, you know, don't get me wrong. I love Cub Swanson and um, obviously my boy, Brian T. City. Um, but you have Lomachenko, Rigandau, which is uh, probably the best boxing fight of the year. I mean, it, it, you guys have heard me. I'm, uh, you know, I kind of praise Lomachenko. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's my pound for pound number one, especially now Andre Ward's retired. Um, and I'll give the breakdown, you know, maybe after the fight night stuff. But um, December 9th, Mass Square Garden, it, it is sold out. It's not. It's the smaller uh, arena in Mass Square Garden. It's not the big one where the Knicks play, but still sold out, sold out months ago. Uh, but if you get a chance, there's, there's sometimes there's once in a lifetime fighters, athletes, um, you know, there's just these type of guys. And Lomachenko, despite I think he's 8-1 and one or some shit like that, he's one of these guys. You've seen him. Uh, TJ Dillashaw trains with him. Uh, Max Holloway actually gave him a shout-out. So he's kind of this new Matrix crazy style. Please look him up. if you if you if Even if you're just an average fight fan, look up his highlights and be like, what the fuck? It's crazy. Now he's going against his stiffest competition, Rigandau, who – is a calculated defensive knockout artist. They're both undefeated. It's a fight everyone's been waiting for. It's such a good matchup. Um, yeah, it goes down this Saturday. It's on ESPN. Surprisingly, it's on ESPN. 
Lomachenko's been fighting on HBO, uh, but he switched over, and the PBC, I think, now is on ESPN. So that is uh, Saturday, man. It's Saturday, so it's a it's such a great matchup. When you if again, even if you guys aren't into boxing, I, I hear you, man. Sometimes it can be a little boring. You're just not into it. It's hard to follow. I get that. Lomachenko's not one of those guys who plays it safe, plays it defensive, or doesn't make it exciting. He's a once-in-a-lifetime type of talent. So even if you're just a casual sports fan and you listen to this podcast, if you're just a casual sports fan, you have this guy fighting Lomachenko uh, Saturday night. It's He's ridiculous. He, it's literally a character out of the video game when he fights. His angles, his movement, the way he looks, he'll put his hands down. It, it's nuts. It's nuts. So he's fighting Saturday night, and then you got the – the fight night. That's Saturday too, right? Mm-hmm. You know, my boy uh, Brian Ortega, T-City, fighting Cub Swanson, which we'll get to the breakdown later in the episode. Um, but this weekend, this past weekend, you had UFC 218. Not a whole lot of buzz about it. Kind of flew under the radar, which you know most UFCs have this year. It is what it is. But there just wasn't a lot of hype or momentum going into this fight. But again, UFC 217, possibly the best pay-per-view of all time. Then you have UFC 218, which, god damn, did it deliver. Especially in the prelims. The prelims were good. Um, you know, you have Yancey and Alex uh, Cowboy Oliria. Um, some think fight of the year. Be tough to argue that it's not. And then Paul uh, Felder obviously delivered with Charles Oliveria. Um, back-to-back Oliveria is tough for me to say for mm-hmm. no reason. But the main card, UFC 218, amazing card. Ridiculous card. Um, definitely worth your money if you did decide to buy the pay-per-view. The only kind of snooze fest, and it's not their fault, is their positioning on the card. Henry Cejudo and Sergio Pettis, and I think even Dana took some credit for this, saying, you know, following Eddie Alvarez and Justin Gaethje is like following Joe Rogan at the Comedy Store or Brian Callen. Like, it's going to be a letdown. It's tough to compete, man. So I thought what they should have done is kicked it off with Henry Cejudo Sergio, Sergio Pettis, and then go Tisha Torres, Michelle Watterson, because we know that's going to be a good fight. And then you go Eddie Alvarez, and then you follow that up with Francis, and you have your main event of Max Holloway. I thought it kind of screwed Henry Cejudo, who's an amazing talent, and if Mighty Mouse decides to not take the super fight with TJ Dillashaw, um, I think Henry Cejudo is definitely the next challenger. There's no one else. That division, man, is a snooze fest, because Mighty Mouse just destroys everyone. So, you know, and I don't know if it's in your current events, Jim, but, you know, Dana said it's as good as done, uh, Mighty Mouse and TJ. But from what I'm hearing and what Ariel even reported, and usually, you know, Ariel's a legit journalist. He covers his three sources. So um, he says there's there's no progress. Like when Dana says that, there's no progress. Mm -hmm. Um, So we will get to some of the things Dana says in this episode. Uh, But again, back to USC 218. uh, I'm sorry, uh, 218, yeah. Uh, the two Father Knights were Eddie Alvarez, Justin Gaethje, then Yancey and Alex, and they both got the bonuses, which I thought was fair. Um, I thought Eddie Alvarez delivered, and Justin Gaethje, it, it kind of delivered to what we thought. It was the war um, we kind of all expected. Justin Gaethje doesn't know how to fight any other way. The reason why I picked Eddie Alvarez as my dog and in this fight, I picked him on you know the podcast Rogan and I did on the JRE MMA Hour, where the fuck he's calling it now. <laughs> The the Joe Rogan Big Brown breakdown, whatever he's calling it now. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but um, the reason I picked Eddie Alvarez as the underdog is because, and again, I have every reason to go for Justin Gaethje. We're from the same camp. I've trained with him. Uh, he's with my coach, Trevor Whitman. He's well-trained, well-versed, all that stuff. So I should be super biased for Gaethje. But when I step back and I look at his fighting style, this cowboy fighting style, when I say cowboy, I don't. I'm not referencing Alex Olivia or Don Cerrone. I'm talking about the Wild West Cowboy where it's this caution uh, is thrown out the window and he's just gunning it. I refuse to back up. You bring it. I bring it. Let's put on a show. Doesn't work this day and age in mixed martial arts. Guys are too good. The best matchup in the world for him was Eddie Alvarez. By far the best matchup for him in the top six. Everyone else walks through Justin Gaethje. And I'm sure I'll take some heat for it. And I know, I know my boys back in Denver are like, fuck you, man. And I, that's fair. You can be mad at me. I just think at a, at a high level, at the upper echelon, you can't fight like that. You can't do that anymore. It's not going to work. 
And even though Eddie Alvarez will entertain that fight and he's down to play that cowboy game and throw caution to the wind, he's still Eddie Alvarez and has beat leaps and bounds better competition than Justin Gaethje. World Series of Fighting does not qualify you to be a top-tier guy in the UFC. It just doesn't. Now, there's the exception with Marias, who's fighting this weekend. But other than that, look at David Branch. David Branch can't hang with the top six. He doesn't have a prayer there. Luke Rockhold had 18 months off and walked through him. Oh, you're black belt on the ground? Cool. I'm going to take you down, body triangle you, and force you to quit. That's what happened there. He was a two-time world champion in World Series of Fighting. Middleweight, light heavyweight. So then, you know, with Justin Gaethje, I get it, and he's been fun to watch, and I wish him continued success. I think by this time next year, he's out of the top 10. Unless they give him the exact matchups. But think about what a guy like Tony Ferguson would do to him. A guy like Khabib. Eddie Alvarez, again, he wants, he, you know, he's the underground king. He's, to me, he's Mount Rushmore. You look at the guys he's beat, the champions that he's beat. Now he just beat Justin Gaethje, who's also a former world champion, multi-time world champion. He's a Hall of Famer. Eddie Alvarez has a lot of miles on him, though. And he's the perfect matchup here. But he's still Eddie Alvarez, and he has other skills he can use to get by Justin Gaethje. Um, I was screaming at the TV for Eddie Alvarez to shoot a double leg. Literally screaming, which I never do. I thought, you know, when when Justin Gaethje puts up his shell and he puts his hands up and just lets him uppercut, and you you have a guy like Eddie Alvarez who can wrestle his ass off. I get Justin Gaethje was a former uh, All American at University, University of Northern Colorado. That double leg is there all day, and when he plays that game and wants to sit there and play on his feet and just slug it out, you can run that double leg all fucking day, all day, all day, all day, and even. Uh, Mark Henry, to me, who's the greatest mastermind in the UFC as far as coaching-wise, the greatest. You look at his guys, Frank Yeager, Eddie Alvarez, uh, Barboza, his numerous, numerous, uh, Marais, um, numerous freaking monsters. He's such a mastermind, the best I've ever worked with, hands down. But he goes, pump that jab, run the double. Pump the jab, run the double. It was there all fucking day. But Eddie Alvarez wanted to be first team all violence, and he got the job done, so it works. But um, I just I feel like that was the one guy just engaged in the top five could possibly take out in a in this kind of brawl and he he couldn't get it done there and I look at the other matchups for him I, I don't see it I just don't see it I know I sound like a hater I should be back in my Denver guy but I just with that style um, if it was ten years ago you're good man you're 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 winning fights all day just based off your chin grit and toughness not these days. Those other, those upper echelon, upper echelon guys aren't going to play that game. It's just not going to be there for you. Uh, so Eddie Alvarez gets it done. Um, you know, f- for him, what's next? You know, off, obviously Poirier is kind of going for that fight, um, but you're not fighting for a while if you're Dustin Poirier. You know, he's coming off the main event uh, win over uh, Anthony Pettis, which is a huge win. Anytime you can beat Pettis, is a huge win. Um, but when do you want to fight Poirier? So I don't know if they move on from it. They also had that weird hiccup when they fought the legal knee. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a guy where, besides Tony Ferguson, Khabib, although it's a little diminished, when there's a matchup and it falls through, I'm good. I'm like, you know what? All right, we're, let's move on. Mm. I'm a, I don't want to see it again. I really don't. I wasn't crazy about Aldo fighting Max Holloway again. I've seen that. Let's move on. I want something new. I always want something new. Unless it's there's like... Like Nate Diaz, Connor, there's like bad blood or there's this trilogy or it's 1-1. One, one. That makes sense to me. You know, I know you have to get there and give a guy a rematch to get there. But once I've seen it, I like to move on. Mm-hmm. I know it's fucked up, but that's just the way I feel about it. Um, again, Henry Cejudo, Sergio Pettis. It's just too much too soon for Pettis. He's not at that level yet. He does everything good, but nothing amazing yet. He's going to be amazing, but it's just too much too soon. Henry Cejudo's... Great and amazing at two things, which will get it done every single time Sergio Pettis and Henry Cejudo fight. Pettis is not winning that fight 10 times out of 10 right now. Two years, different story. Two years, Pettis is probably your champ, especially if Demetrius Johnson is out. Pettis will be a champion, not yet. Too much too soon. Uh, Hopefully he comes back from that, realizes he needs to work on things, um, and and take more chances. You're going to get, real quick, when you fight Henry Cejudo, if I'm Sergio Pettis' coach, and again, he has one of the greatest coaches in the world, Rufus, I'd go, listen, we're going to work on your wrestling, no doubt. But look at me. You're going to get taken down. I promise you you're going to get taken down. 
But we got to take risks. We got to try and finish him. He's going to get you down. He's an Olympic gold medalist. You've been wrestling at a low level. Granted, you've been fighting the UFC. We can't compete with that. Same thing when you fight a DC, when you fight a Kane, you fight a Brock Lesnar. Chances are you can get taken down. It's all good, but we got to take risk and try it. If he's going to shoot, he's going to pay for it. There's knees, the threat on the ground, off my back. I'm working that. But let's assume you're going to get taken down. When you get taken down, don't shut down mentally. We need you to take risk because no matter, even if you don't take risk, you're going to get taken down. I can guarantee you're going to get taken down. And to me, he looked almost like, almost surprised and not content, but very hesitant because he's worried about the takedown. Brother, you're going to take down no matter what. There's not a coach in the world. I know he had uh, John Jones coach and the Jackson coach in there. Uh, his name slipped my mind right now with him. I worked with him. He's, Izzy? Izzy. He's amazing. Izzy's, God, man, top three wrestling coaches in the world. He's amazing. Runs the program in Chicago. Worked with the likes of John Jones and Guida, all these guys. Izzy's one of the best in the world. Great guy. I don't give a fuck if you have Dan Henderson squirting water in your mouth. You got fucking Gable rubbing your shoulders and Izzy telling you how to not get taken down. You're going to get taken down. You'd work one year straight on wrestling. And when you fight a guy like Cejudo, DC, these Olympic level guys, you're going to get taken down. So let's take risk, which the, the, he never did. He, he was very conservative and just got, he just, he's not at that level yet. But it's, it's, I think if anything, he's going to grow from this. Cause you go, all right, I'm not there yet. I have this to work on. And he's just going to run through guys and he'll get back there. He will be your champ. He's just, like I say, he's good at everything. Not great. And then again, they got fucked because again, I'm not trying, I'm trying not to cuss, but shit happens. <laughs> they got screwed because Henry Cejudo, Sergio Pettis, that could have been the greatest flyweight fight of all time. And I didn't give a fuck. I was sweating anxiously for Francis and Overeem to come fight. It's all I could think about all day. I was like, oh my God. I text Rogan as soon as I got up more, I went, bro, Francis Overeem tonight. Like I was like a kid in a candy store, man. Um, and I, you know, I've been skeptical of Francis, meaning I'm not ready to crown him the heavyweight champion of the world, greatest of all time, like everyone else right away. I'm not trying to suck his Cameroon dick like everyone. He has to prove it to me. He has to prove it, man. I'm just not ready to just fucking get on my knees and welcome to America with my mouth wide open. So, like this mic. Um, that fight, man, was so violent. That uppercut was so goddamn violent. Probably the worst knockout I've ever seen. Just as far as sure, like, you you see how big and massive Ngannou, just this fucking black statue of a man and alistair that's who that's uber ream man granted it's not the uber room but but still she has all the skills and you can tell over original game plan was go in there not get hit rush him get him to the fence and try and grapple to wear him out and it was like a kid trying to take down a grown man and once i think once he got in that clinch it was like oh he's made off concrete and he's from the congo or Cameroon, sorry, hashtag no racist. He's from Cameroon, and he was homeless five years ago. Five years ago, Francis is homeless. That jack dude on the side asking for food <laughs> was Francis in Africa. And now he's fighting Alistair over him. You think he gives a fuck about his accolades? You think he cares Alistair over him was Strike Force World Champion, K1 Grand Prix? He doesn't give a fuck. He was homeless. He's fighting to put food on the table. And this is my thing. And whenever I bring this up, people are like, dude, you're so critical of the guys when they, they're doing the Hollywood stuff or they're doing the UFC tonight. And this is my exact motherfucking point. I'm trying not to cuss, but it's coming out today. This is my exact point. Francis is not worried about your tailored suit. Francis is not worried about being on the desk at UFC tonight. Francis could give two fucks about starring in the next Expendable 7. He does not care. He was homeless. He wants to be the greatest of all time. So while you're out on UFC tonight, doing the analyst work, whatever, doing this movie, doing this TV show, doing this, doing this, Francis is at the UFC Performance Institute getting the best training, recovery, 
Anything he can do become world champion. And you're supposed to compete with that. There's no way it's going to catch up with you. If there's a Francis at 155, there's a Francis coming at 170. There's a Francis out there coming at 85. There's a Francis at the 205 that's coming. These guys are coming. And you want to play grab ass. This is how it works. Francis could give two fucks about your role, your cameo on Always Sunny. He doesn't care about that stuff. He wants to knock your face off because he was homeless. There's no plan B for a guy like Francis. He's not going to fucking work in the movies. There's not, unless he's the bad guy with no speaking roles. Unless they do fucking, uh, uh, what's that movie? True Lies 2, and he's the bad guy in the bathroom. We don't have a role for you. Unless they, unless Eddie Murphy does Come to America 2, there's no roles for Francis in this Hollywood business. He doesn't give a fuck, even if you offer it to him. All he wants to do is train, be the best of all time. So go compete with that. Because I promise you guys, these type of guys, this type of athlete is coming. He's already at heavyweight. And again, five years ago, he was homeless. Now he's going to be fighting for the world title. These freaks are out there, man. And you guys want to play all this candy-ass game and do this, do this, and fly over here and star in this movie and make this connection and go to this party. Cool. Francis's are out there. And they're homeless and they're jacked to the gills and they just want to fight. Not to mention, it's in his blood. His dad was a world famous street fighter in Cameroon. Mm. Think about the type of shit that kid's grown up with. And you're sleeping in satin sheets. Good luck. S- scariest guy of all time. I was like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Who's get- How the fuck is he only going to beat him? I hope Stipe shows up in a singlet and wrestling shoes and the wrestling headgear. Because we're not doing shit stand-up wise. Now, am I ready to am I ready to give him the, the title of the greatest of all time? No, not yet. Is he the scariest of all time? You're talking a guy who competed in the UFC. Not a lot scared me. Uber Reem, I was like, all right, probably wouldn't be able to beat him unless I get on steroids. Francis, he's afraid to take protein powder because he's afraid to fail a test. <laughs> so everyone wants to give him skeptical hip eyes. I get that. We're just not built the same. We're just not, man. He's a freak. He's gone through some crazy stuff. That's what you get. Diamonds are made out of pressure. He's been in some insane pressure. I'm sure most of us can't even imagine. Does he get by Stipe? Well, and uh, do you have the odds up? He's a, he's a favorite. Um, oh, for them, I don't. Yeah, the, the, there's odds for uh, Francis Stipe are out already. And hopefully, it, again, that's on UFC 220 in Boston the night before my uh, Wilbur Theater show. Just won a lot of hype that weekend. But um, we we haven't seen Francis really tested against a guy like Stipe. Yeah, he fought uh, Blades, who's a Juco national champion wrestler. And when you bat your eyes at Juco and go, it's Juco. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Juco's legit as fuck. Wrestling, uh, even at NAIA, Division Two, Division Three, Juco. John Jones was a Juco national champ. A lot of times, Juco does not mean you weren't good enough to compete at Division One. A lot of times, those Juco guys can beat anyone in the world. There, it might be a grade thing. It might be a, mm-hmm. a, a, just, a, you know, who knows? Who knows? But some reason, they end up at some shit town Juco, but they're monsters. They're just monsters. I know a ton of guys who went to Juco, and you would not want to wrestle them. They could walk into any wrestling room in the world and compete and probably be the best still. Um, so he did fight Blades, and people go, well, he's a Juco national champ. Jesus Christ, that's pretty good. John Joe's a Juco national champ. Anthony Johnson was a Juco national champ. There's a lot of lot of talent in Juco, so don't just bat your eyes at that. Now, he beat him, and that's an earlier uh, Blades, and you know I don't think that it would be any different. Maybe Ngannou beats him faster this time, if anything. But mm-hmm. still, it's, it's a... It's a uh, a young blades, but he, you know he has fought grapplers before. Hamilton was a grappler wrestler, but they're not to Stipe's level. Meaning, they're not as good as mixed martial artist grapplers. Um, so if Francis were to beat Stipe, you got a real problem. You got a real problem in your hands because I don't know who the fuck's going to beat him. I, I think for Doom is actually a bit of a tougher matchup. Um, because of his ground game, because he's a lot longer, um, his striking's a little more dynamic with the kicks and the elbows and in this clinch. He's very good in the clinch. Um, he can jump to guard. Those those options aren't available, Stipe. 
So I, I think Verdun might be the one guy where if he were to beat Francis, win Francis champ, he goes down as the greatest heavyweight of all time, hands down, no questions asked. That's another topic for another day. There's a lot that has to happen. But with Francis and Stipe, it's a great fight. It's the best heavyweight fight since a prime JDS Kane, since a prime freaking Shane Carl and Brock Lesnar. Um, but we're in this era, and you, you got to kind of, you know, put your eyes on Conor McGregor. And you can thank him for it or you can hate him for it. Where we're in the, the money fight era. We're in the money era where everyone wants – they want to jump weight classes and get the biggest name, even though they're not the same weight class and vacate this belt and intern belts. And this doesn't make sense, but we're going to do this and this, this, and this. And you have all these guys jumping around. And then now you have two legit guys who've worked their way. They're, they're really not in part of the entertainment money fight era. They're two guys that blue collar. I mean, for, to say Francis blue collar would be an understatement. He, I mean, talking about homeless, uh, grew up on the streets. He's from Africa. Moved to France. Had his struggles there. Um, has only been training for four years. Now he's fighting for a world title. Um, not the best on the mic. When he jacked the mic from Joe Rogan, you saw Joe's face. Um, again, he's 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 not a mastermind on the mic. Are we too far past where we can promote a guy like Francis, even though he's the scariest guy to ever grace the octagon? Are we too far past? Now that WME, uh, IMG owns the UFC and it's the Hollywood business and people are dancing with the stars and movies and they're on the cover of GQ and they're doing all this stuff. Well, then what do you do when you have a legit fighter who doesn't give a fuck about any of that stuff but has a phenomenal story most Americans can't relate to? But it's still the American dream where five years ago he had nothing and now he's you know, the best fighter on the planet, the best man on the planet. Or at least he's attempting to become the best man on the planet. Serious. Scariest for sure, and he's becoming uh, trying to become the bass man on the planet. Where the heavyweight's always the bass man on the planet, no matter what other, everyone's doing, the heavyweight can kick anyone's ass in the room just because they're bigger uh, than everyone else. So, um, for Francis, it's like great story. The UFC has such a problem on their hands, meaning the, the new marketing guys, and you can tell from their social media. They're a little off. They're not great. They don't come from the same background. They're trying though. I'm not. I'm not scolding them. Um, you know, when Eddie Alvarez fought and Gaethje, they went fighting for the lightweight title of the world. You know, there's just there's certain things you can't fuck up. And when you fuck up details, that just means you're not ready. You're just not ready. You guys aren't ready yet. It's not there. They need to bring someone on board who knows the game. They're just not there yet. And with those slight details. To me, those are big details. To the the hardcore fan, those are huge. Well, Eddie and Justin Gaethje aren't fighting for a lightweight title. What are you talking about? Everything can't be a war. I get it. It's okay to use every now and then, and I made fun of him for using it nonstop. But you can't use it for everything. Not everything's a war. Um, you can't highlight, you know, the, and posterize a guy like Alistair over in that knockout, and you, that's that's the highlight of the guy getting knocked out. You remember, Alistair's worked for the company for a long time. You don't want to face the value of Alistair Overeem because of one fight. You can't make fun of guys for getting knocked out. Again, it's, it's having respect for the athletes in the sport. They're just not there yet. They come from these other bases, the NBA, the NFL, stuff like that. And now they have this problem on their hands where Francis isn't good on the mic. Stipe's not great on the mic. But let's look at the, But their backstories are the best we've ever seen. You got Stipe. He's a full-time firefighter. He fights fires. He saves people's lives. He has to be the best man on the planet. Oh, and he's a really good dude. Oh, and he played baseball at Cleveland State. Oh, and he wrestled at Cleveland State. Oh, and he went to bat and practice with Cleveland Indians and hit home runs. But is he going to give you a Conor McGregor WWE promo rip on the mic? Nope. Nope. Not at all. Uh, is France Gano going to get on there and give you some crazy promo like The Undertaker? Nope. But that's what this new WME is used to. They're used to that selling. So they don't have to do much, do they? They really don't have to carry the thing because they sold itself. I can make a highlight video of Conor McGregor talking. You're going to buy that goddamn fight. Well, we don't have that now. What we have is the two most talented heavyweights in the world fighting. It's the most relevant heavyweight fight in a long, long time. The ball's in your corner, UFC. 
You have to sell that. Because a lot of the fans don't know Francis. Yeah, they know he's a scary black guy. They don't know his story. I'm pretty sure you're going to sell a shitload more pay-per-views if we find out his story. Oh, yeah. A shitload more. He's homeless. Not to mention, now you can kind of tap into that African market. Africa's a giant fucking continent. I'm sure you could use the views. And now I know not all of them have TVs and stuff, but South Africa, there's, it's, there's some legit places, yes. for God's sakes. All I'm saying is there's a lot of fucking people out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with Stipe, you know, he, he's been a, a, the heavyweight champ for a while. He's going for the most title defense of all time at heavyweight, which is impossible to do because anyone can get caught. He's beat some of the best. If he would beat Francis, to me, even if, you know, if he beats Francis, he's right there. And then if he beats Kane, it's not even a conversation. He's the best heavyweight of all time. Um, but if he beats Francis, I think he jumps ahead of Kane for a number of reasons. But w- we can get to that when they fight. Um, so for Stipe, you know, it's the same thing with Tony Ferguson. The same thing with a lot of these guys. People go, why aren't they superstars? Well, they just got to win a few more fights. Sometimes not everyone can be a superstar. They might be the best fighters on the planet, but they're not superstars, a la Mighty Mouse. Grandy's smaller. But now your heavyweight should be a superstar, right? He's not. He's not a superstar. He's huge in Detroit. I'm big in Europe, bro. Doesn't matter. You know, you hear that all the time. I'm huge in Europe. All right, cool, man. Uh, you hear that from bands and DJs. All right, that doesn't mean shit here. So with Stipe, he can't walk anywhere in Cleveland. He's huge in Cleveland. Everyone loves him in Cleveland. But in America in general, they don't know Stipe. Not really, which is a shame. Because he's a firefighter. He's just like us. He's worked his ass off. Multi-sport athlete. He's beat some of the best guys in the world. And now he has one hell of a problem to figure out named Francis. Who happens to be the hardest hitter in the world. And we've seen no chink in his armor. We have not seen his chink in his armor at all. Now there is some dude walking around the streets in Africa or wherever that has beat Francis. Beat him in decision. That guy is strolling the streets right now. Laughing it up. I don't know where he is. I don't know who he is, but tip of the hat to you, sir. Tip of the hat. I bet you do not want to fight him now, but tip of the hat for beating him in any facet. Even beating him checkers, I got respect for you. That guy is fucking scary. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting what the UFC does. And if they do book it on UFC 220 in Boston, it's not a ton of time. Does just the heavyweight champion of the world, the heavyweight championship of the world in Boston, sell pay per views? Not this day and age. It's too much content. Look at the pay-per-view numbers. It doesn't do it. I'd be on it right now. I could not announce that fight fast enough. Because you know what else isn't selling pay-per-views? DC Ozdemir. That ain't doing shit. DC John Jones is only 800. And that's huge these days. That's John Jones, son. That's more John Jones than DC. He's gone. Ozdemir has 70 Twitter followers. So you got to figure it out. If I'm the UFC, I'm I'm stressed. Going, all right, we, we need to figure out some sick promo. We need to air now. But again, you're not going to sell pay-per-views putting Francis on, on this podcast or on the Joe Rogan experience or put him on fucking Good Morning America. I don't, that's not going to sell. Even if he wears that African getup, uh, which I love, I don't. So you this is you got a different dynamic on your hands now. It's called being a promoter. Because Conor McGregor's done it for you. Ronda Rousey did it for you. Brock Lesnar did it for you. You know, all these guys doing it for you. Well, now, you know, Kobe Covington doing it for you. What are you going to do? Now we see what WME is all about. Do, can they carry the torch? It's a big fucking can they. It's a big if, man. And I hope they do him justice. I really do. Also, if I'm another, and I don't know how the dynamics work, whatever. If I'm another fighter and I'm on the cusp of being a superstar, I'm moving my ass to Las Vegas to get to that world-class facility, the UFC Performance Center. They're injecting fucking Francis with some skills in that Bane formula, and I want to be part of that. But uh, how's that work? Does everyone get to do it? What if I want to do my camp and Francis is there? What if Steve and Francis want to do their camp? And we got to see each other. And we have camp. How's it going to work? Mm-hmm. How's that? What if every UFC fighter want to move their camp there? How's that going to work? Can they house them? These are questions I, 
I find fascinating. I didn't I didn't really can I didn't really take that UFC Institute serious. I know it looks pretty and all that. Um, but is it a Maserati where it looks great on the outside and the inside it's a fucking Ford mortar? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then now we see Francis, which he's moved there, decades life there, and you see him just f- murking dudes. If I'm a fighter right now, I go, mm, I should probably get to Vegas, check it out. And it's at least worth the check out. So there's the Francis bit. I'm so far on that guy's fucking train. Him, fucking uh, Darren Till. Choo-choo! I'm all up on this bitch. I'm all up on this bitch. But if there's a chink in his armor, Stipe will find out. Stipe, you know, he, he has the the tools to where he can try to test Francis in other ways pe- guys haven't. The pressure... You know, the, if the one shot doesn't land, how's he react? If he gets taken down, how's he react? How's his cardio being so jacked? What's he look like in the fourth round if we get there? What's he look in the fifth round if he gets there? Stipe's a very good grappler, too. He's, when he gets on top, you're in a little bit of trouble. So I want to see that out of Francis. I'd love to see that. I don't want Francis to come in and murk Stipe in the first round. I'd like to see my champion be tested, you know, to make correlation to, to boxing. When Anthony Joshua fought Klitschko, Prior to that, we knew he was a monster. He looks like a freak. Francis is very similar. We know he's a monster. He's knocking everyone out. He looks the part. But then once they fight a legit dude and the the chips are stacked against him, how's he react? Anthony Joshua got flatlined. He forgot what round it is. He got flatlined so hard he thought the fight was over. Goes in his corner, goes back out there, knocks Klitschko out. Now we know he's the real deal. So with Francis, I'd love to see something similar. He gets taken down. Stipe gets a hold of his neck. Stipe's mixing it up. There's pressure. It's up and down, back and forth. He's kind of outclassing Francis. Then Francis pulls it out. You want to see that out of your champion. Because we've seen Stipe in the thick of it, man. Overeem had that dude dead to rights. Stipe comes back. Stipe's been in a lot of trouble. Stipe went down to Brazil, knocked out Verdum. Stipe's beat the brakes off Mark Hunt. He's done all sorts of things where he's such a legit champ, which why he's in the conversation for best of all time. Francis has it. Francis just has it. Uh, shit, we're spending a lot of time in UFC 218. Back to the main <laughs> event, Holloway and um, Jose Aldo. This fight never really did anything for me. I'm, I'm never that excited about it. I don't think Aldo's all the way in. I, 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 I just, I think, you know, he's had his career. We saw how it happened before. Everyone's riding and dying on, oh, Jose Aldo was hurt last time, so he didn't use his kicks. Really? He threw two kicks this time. Where's that story? I never believed that shit. That doesn't work for me. Oh, I was hurt last time. That's why I didn't mix it up. What about the fights after that and prior to that? What happened? Because you're just boxing. You just keep boxing. Oh, I was hurt. So it's going to be different this time. No, it's no different. I, th- I thought you know he, he didn't look as fluid as he was in the first fight. Um, I, I do think Jose Aldo is the best featherweight of all time. When people keep saying, no, Max Holloway is the best featherweight of all time, he hasn't done enough of the body of work to be considered the greatest of all time. He's fucking close, and he beat Jose Aldo, who is the best of all time, but he needs to get a little more wins before we can just crown him the best of all time, featherweight of all time. Because remember, he's beaten an older Jose Aldo. Now, I get it, he's only 31, but he's a Jose Aldo with a ton of miles on him, a ton of miles. And... You know, when you go back and you look at Jose Aldo like against uh, Chad Mendez, it, which to me is one of the best fights of all time, especially part two, or, you know, the Kenny Florian fights or Hominick fight, all that stuff. That Jose Aldo was pre USADA. I'm not saying he's on sauce. I'm not saying any of that. But maybe it has to do with the IVs. That USADA changed a lot of things where you can't have IVs anymore. For a guy like Jose Aldo who cuts a shitload of weight, it's an issue for him. When he can't use an IV to rehydrate, it's going to have some for- sort of diminishing effect on him. So I-, I think that has to do with it. I just think he's older. He's t- he, you know, he owns these uh, burger joints in Brazil. He's talking about retiring. He's talking about boxing. He's talking about soccer. What's Max Holloway talking about? He's talking about being in the movies? Mm-mm. He's talking about being on UFC tonight? Could give two shits. Is he talking about uh, boxing? Nope. He's talking about becoming the greatest featherweight of all time. He's talking about getting out of that shadow of BJ Penn. That's what he's talking about. That's all he's concerned about. He, he doesn't talk shit. He doesn't do any of that. Again, he's, he's, not, he's not really selling it for the UFC where he's ripping these promos. He's, doing, he's just doing work, and he's humble in it, and he's gracious, and everyone likes him. You don't have to be this WWE guy this this day and age. 
Now, you, now WME needs it, but you don't have to be. Max Holloway showed that. He's definitely shown that. Um, it was just a matter of time before he knocked out Jose Aldo. So what's next for Max Holloway in the world of the the money era and the super fight era and the WWE era? I don't want to hear him talk about jumping to 155 and fighting Tony. I don't want to see any of that. I'd love to see him fight, stay at 45. Um, him versus Connor would be great. Connor's never fighting at 45 again, so that's not going to happen. We might as well not even talk about it. Um, I'm sure it's in your current events, and we'll get to it then. So what's next for Max Holloway? I would say probably the, you know, I'd like to see Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar would be good. Um, he has a legit argument why you should fight him next. The fight doesn't knock my hair back, but I'd like to see it. I would love for Brian Ortega to beat my boy Cub Swanson. Obviously, I'm close with Brian. I'd love for Brian Ortega to see a fresh face in there and get some spotlight. He's headlined this weekend. You know, he's undefeated, late submissions. He's ranked number six. He makes the most sense. He's new. So uh, I'd like to see that. But, you know, th- there's not a ton. That that division's not great, man. Max Holloway's kind of cleaned out everyone. So that's why you get these super fights, and that's where you get the major money. I'd love to see him go to Brazil. Uh, I'm sorry, go to uh, Hawaii and uh, have a fight. I'd love to do a show before that. I'd love to fly to Hawaii, wow. do a comedy show on the night uh, before they do a big Max Holloway card on his next card. I can make that happen. So, Max, you work on getting a fight for the <laughs> UFC there. You have the hard job. Mine is easy. Um, but Max, sorry, how we, there's there's not a bad thing to say about the guy. He's amazing. He's amazing. The whole card was good. It delivered. Um, sorry, ladies. Brian Callen thinks you're all on steroids. That's his thing. Uh, I disagree. I think this day and age with USADA, it's a nightmare. So we should do some current events, man. I spent way too much time in UFC 218. Great card, though, so you got to talk about it. Cool. One sec here. All right. Well, you already talked about this. Lomachenko, Rigandau, yeah, it's mm-hmm. on ESPN. 9 o'clock. Starts at 9 o'clock Eastern. Uh, PBC Boxing. What else you got? Floyd Mayweather, back in the news. Uh, he was just saying that he he admitted that he was carrying Conor McGregor to the fight for the fans. He was making it last longer for the fans. Did he admit to getting rocked by that uppercut? Did, nope. Was that his plan, too? No, <laughs> he didn't of course say that. not. Um, yeah, I mean, but when he says carry him, you know, he's feeling it out. He's not going to be stupid. The reason he's the greatest of all time is because he's he's going to feel it out. He's not going to risk getting knocked out by him. Um, I I just don't. If you're if you're Floyd Mayweather, it's just like enjoy your money and dip out, bro. You were supposed to win. So I don't know if he's trying to get another rematch, which no one wants to see. For God's sakes, um, you guys know I'm a Conor Dick Rider. I do not want to see that. So he put when Oscar De La Hoya, the same one that was talking about me fighting Conor McGregor, he was trying to protest, stop the fight. Now he's trying to fight Conor. Is he a hypocrite or is he back on coke again? That man, that boy, still snorting the lines, still snorting the lines. Everybody tried to protest the Mayweather-McGregor fight, but I'm going to tell you all the truth. You know I cared McGregor. You know I made it look good for y'all. Ah, it's, it's just Mayweather being Mayweather. So this was on, he was speaking of boxing hype, and people are just assuming that he's trying to get something going. Possible for either Connor or De La Hoya. Like a, <laughs> I, listen I to me right now. If Oscar De La Hoya fights Floyd, mm-hmm. Or Conor McGregor, I will stop watching <laughs> fighting. Yeah, mark my word. If Conor fights Oscar De La Hoya or Floyd Mayweather again, I will stop watching fighting. There will be no more big round breakdown. I will not commentate on anything. Oh, shit. That's, if, if I see Oscar De La Hoya with his tits to the side, coked to the fucking gills, boxing with his... F- no! No, Golden Boy, absolutely not. You know, I'd you, you know I'd rather see than Oscar De La Hoya fight Conor McGregor. I'd rather see more fucking pictures of 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 uh, Oscar De La Hoya in drag. I'd rather you DM me pictures of your dick in drag <laughs> than watch you fight a boxing match when you're forty something years old against a young dude. I'd rather watch a gay porno of you dressed in wig, lipstick, oh, man. a bukkake video, than you fight anybody in boxing. No, absolutely not. Not a big fan of that one, huh? I'd rather someone jam a straw, one of those giant boba ice cream straws in my dick <laughs> hole, huge. in my dick hole, than watch Oscar De La Hoya fight again. Damn, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, oh, boba straws. God damn it. You, those boba straws they're are enormous. no joke. And they're strong. They are yeah. like a diesel exhaust pipe. They're damn. so big. Just get those big boba balls through them. Mm-hmm. They're delicious. And they're so. strong. Yeah. So that's going to hurt. Yeah. So Oscar Del Hoya, I'd rather take that boba straw, jam it in my dick hole, than watch you compete again. Oh, You're no. one of the greats. You're the golden boy. And maybe you are snorting that freaking uni- unicorn dandrift, whatever the fuck it is. You're living on another planet. Ain't nobody. That will not sell. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. What else you got? Another boxing match you might be excited for. Uh, Anderson Silva and... <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> They're talking to each other. They both want. They're still down to to box each other. So, Roy Jones is on uh, Gary V, his show, his podcast. Gary V is the motivational guy. Yeah, yeah, he's like huge on social media. Yeah, right yeah, now. I can't do the motivational shit. Okay. What else you get? Uh, so he was on his show, and he was like, uh, he was bringing up the whole potential boxing match that never happened between Anderson Silva. For good. He reason. wants to still do it, and then Anderson Silva replied by going on his Instagram and saying he wants to do it in so many words. So he put, okay, Roy Jones, Roy Jr., this is everything I've wanted for years, long before all this happened. It will be a pleasure to step in the ring with you. I have great respect, admiration. Nice, nice, nice. It's been a great dream. Let's make this event happen. I think we have this right. In fact, it's something both you and I are willing to do, so let's make it happen, Mr. Roy. Uh, I don't want to see it. I just... Roy needs to stop. Just be an awesome HBO commentator. Just be a biased commentator on HBO. Just be that guy. I like Roy. I really, I, I'm not, but let's not box. Like, do you see him get knocked down in uh, Russia or something like that? I don't know if it's a money issue or what. And with Roy, like, or um, with Anderson, if he doesn't test hot, he's not even talking about this. That's probably the only fight he can do. Mm-hmm. And they can both take steroids and do the thing. I don't want to see it. I just don't want it. The, the older guys box, I don't want to see. I don't want to see Magic Johnson in the post against Larry Bird right now. It's the same shit. Just go away. Go. You do something more with the sport. Shouldn't be fighting, though. I don't want to see it. You don't. It doesn't do well either, ratings-wise. No one's watching that. Mm. And then you That's a circus. That's more of a circus. This one's more That'd than, be a circus. Then De La Hoya and... Floyd? Whoa, 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 no, no, no. That's a complete shit show. <laughs> Anything with De- Del Hoya at this age and his coke problems is a shit show. Yeah. I'm talking two older dudes who are way past their prime. The only reason this happened is Anderson tested hot, so he can't fight in the UFC anymore, and he's ruined his legacy. Now he's trying to get this fight because there's nothing he can do. That's a shit show. Yeah. People go, oh, but you didn't, you didn't think Connor Floyd is? It's not because Connor's in his prime. There's a difference. What else you got? Fair enough. And he did mention the whole thing where he would be cool with him using steroids, too. Roy would be cool with Anderson using steroids. Oh, really? He did say that. All right. Do your th- I mean, juice to the gills. Do it. It's the only way it's going to happen. And you talked about this one already, that well, Stipe and Francis might be fighting on 220. It's, gotta, not, it's not official or anything. They got to get going if they're going to do it right. Mm-hmm. I hope that freaking happens because I'll go to the fight and watch that chaos. Yep, Dana said the contract stuff that Stipe had before, it's all settled now, so Ooh. it's just just them getting it done. And you know Stipe wants to fight. Mm-hmm. You know that boy ain't scared of Francis. That's why he's the heavyweight champion of the world. I love that. What else you got? Let's look here. Oh, yeah, so Conor McGregor, as soon as Holloway won, he went on Twitter and posted a picture with a Max, Max Holloway in a wheelchair, and his eyes are black. <laughs> He's got in a fight, and he goes. I, he says, "I miss those sunglasses." Uh, random, random, uh, kind of funny. I, I, you know, if you're a Conor McGregor fan, at least you know he's still into it, and you know he doesn't like that. You know, Max is kind of killing it in the division right now. I thought Max's comeback was great. It was like, yeah. "You're still referring to a fight when we were kids, huh?" And mm-hmm. then post. You know, miss sunglasses. I also bet you missed 2015, brother. Retired fighters love the past. Then he puts all of his kind of accolades. Yeah. Um, Max handled it great. For Connor, you know, I think it's good. At least he's still aware he's in the game, stuff like that. And it, it, it makes it relevant. I would love to see that fight. Max Holloway is a different fighter. Conor McGregor's a, a different fighter. If they did fight, I think it is for the best 145s of all time. 
But he can never go back down that way, right? No, from what I hear, 145 will never happen. I, if they were to fight, and again, then there goes the featherweight crown, um, it'd be at 55. Mm-hmm. I don't think Con- you're never going to see Connor, especially this day and age where, where he's doing flying around, being the celebrity that he's doing. 45 ain't happening. Uh, but Max handle it so, uh, good. Could this be him calling him, calling him out to go to 155? Um, Would that even be a super fight? That's a super fight for cool. sure. Any super fight, fight with Connor and a champ is a super fight. Um, that's super fight for sure. I you can't do that. You cannot do that because for so many reasons, but what do you do with Tony Ferguson? Tony Ferguson, Max Holloway's a super fight. Uh Tony Ferguson Connor's a super fight. Tony Ferguson Khabib's a great fight. Uh Tony Ferguson, if Barboza get by Khabib's a great fight. Would you will you just throw Tony to the side because he's not a huge draw? Yeah. You can't. You just can't because he's, he's literally the best 155 on the planet. So um, you, you can't do that fight. This doesn't make sense. There has to be some sort of stability in the UFC. All righty, next one. Dana White says that Nganu is going to be a rock star globally. This He just said this kind of in passing, but he does believe that once you know Nganu does work in the division, cleans it out, he's gonna he can potentially be a big star. It's tough, and you know Dana White knows this more than anyone, but there's a couple of factors that go into being a star. Uh, just because you're the heavyweight champion of the world doesn't mean you're a superstar. Just because you're international and you're African doesn't mean you're a superstar. Uh, just because you murk guys left and right doesn't make you a superstar. He would have to murk guys one after the other after the other and before the public catches on. The hardcore fans are like, yes, he's fucking amazing, but, you know, it, it, there there has to be some sort of X factor there where his story and he he can speak to the the public and there has to be some sort of crossover to become a superstar. So he he would have to kind of become because you remember Mike Tyson had a personality. Mike Tyson was ferocious. He got on the mic and say some wild shit that everyone covered. Francis and get, go on there talk about slavery and stuff like that. That's not gonna spread like wildfire. Unfortunately, it's a bummer, but mm-hmm. it, that's not the way media works. So. Um, Francis would have to have some sort of angle where he's just this nightmare where no one's lasting more than a minute. He's ripping everyone's face off. He just walks in. Everyone knows who he is. Everyone's scared. Uh, Can you do that these days? I don't know. I'm not sure, man. I I, I really, I I don't know. With as much contents out there, as many stars as there are, the WWE era and the UFC, the money fight era, I don't know. I don't know. There's potential there, but his angle and his English, it, it, there's certain things that you have to connect. Mm-hmm. Think about how great John Jones is. Think about how much of a master inside the UFC icon John Jones is. He's not an international superstar. Yeah, He's not a superstar. Draws 800. When I think superstar, now I'm going based off legit superstar. The crossover guys where E's picking it up, TMZ's picking it up. TMZ ain't picking up anything, anything Francis does. They might show that knockout and say, look at this scary guy, knock out this scary guy. Think of all the things Alistair Overeem's done. He's not a superstar. He's not a worldwide superstar. It just doesn't work like that. So, not like Connor or Ronda level superstar, right? Yeah, there has to be that weird pop culture crossover. I know people get so sick of the superstar air and stuff like that. I didn't come up with this shit. I didn't come up with the business plan. There, there. This is, shit rolls downhill, man. It started with Connor, really, and then everyone mimicked it. But you, there's only one Connor, so now everyone wants these money fights. Everyone wants to jump around. That's what you get. Hmm. Does it? It does. I hope he's that. a superstar. I hope he's a superstar because for the UFC to eat, they need superstars in their current business plan. Their current model, which they ride and die of pay-per-view, they also get their money from Fox for the Fox shows, but they ride and die of pay-per-views. Pay-per-views are star-driven. The only way a big pay-per-view happens is by having a superstar. What's good for the UFC, what's good for Bellator is good for me. I'm in the fight business. So the more superstars they have, the better it is for the whole economy of fighting, for everybody involved. We want superstars, so I hope he's the biggest superstar in the world. Do I see it? No. As far as crossover, no. The African market has so much work to do. They've tried it before. There, there's a lot that has to develop there. You just can't have a guy from them and the whole nation gets behind them. 
it's third world country. So, you know, there's going to be – granted, so is Brazil and look at their superstars, but they come from a culture of fighting, a culture of mixed martial arts. Jiu-jitsu was developed there. There's, there's a different background. Um, I hope he's a superstar. But in their current business model, which I think with their new TV negotiations will fold, I don't think they're going to ride and die off pay-per-view. I think you're going to get six pay-per-views, eight pay-per-views a year now, and the rest of the major stars – will be on Fox or wherever they land, NBC, Amazon. You're going to get better fights on regular TV because the pay-per-view model, since it's so relied on superstars and it's been up and down, mm. the new TV rights are going to go, no, 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 we're not doing it anymore. Oh, and Fight Pass? See ya. That's not working either. We, you, we, we need all that content to live on our network. So I think you see less pay-per-views. But you're going to get better pay-per-views, but less – you see Fight Pass fold, and uh, you're going to get better fights on TV. That's the only way they get a TV deal. What else you got? Here's a random question. Um, you know, like, people want to see heavier weight classes for whatever reason. They don't like seeing the smaller guys fight as much. If you had someone with the same kind of personality and whatever that Connor had, but at a heavier weight class, do you think that would be the number one the weight class? Star yeah, the biggest time. star of all time. The biggest star of all time. If, you know, granted Connor's a knockout artist at 55 and 45, but if you had a knockout artist with the Connor McGregor personality and heavyweight and uh, talent, the mouthpiece, all that goes with Connor McGregor, even if he was from Dublin, if he was from Dublin, but then you have uh, basically a new Mike Tyson. You have a Mike Tyson, but. Even more so in this day and age of Instagram and social media and the networks and the 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 all this stuff that just build them, build them, build them. You'd, you'd have the biggest combat star of all time, of all time. Because you know Anthony Joshua in boxing, phenomenal on the mic. He's good on the mic. You know he he doesn't rip the best promos, but smart dude looks like freaking you know. He's better looking than Ganu body body wise. He's a fucking freak. Gold medalist in the Olympics, knocks out everyone, beat a legend in Klitschko. You know, we're waiting for this Deontay Wilder fight. He's f- probably fighting Joshua Parker next, but still, he's this international superstar. He's not big here. Mm. Mike Tyson was big everywhere. Michael Jordan's big everywhere. Conor McGregor's big everywhere. Everywhere. There's this weird crossover, man. It has to be greatness, personality. Francis is missing one of those. And what do all those superstars have in common? They speak English. All of them speak English. He's getting better. Francis? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he is. I mean, yeah. I'd give him a D, but yeah. yeah. But again, that's kind of the that makes it even scarier. Oh, shit. I can't have a conversation with him. He's going to knock me the fuck out. I'm trying to apologize for fighting him. He doesn't care or understand. Trying to be cool at weigh-ins, he does not care. We'll see, man. All right, move on Move on from this. Uh, Dana White's saying that George St. Pierre told him he's dealing with something called colitis now. Anyone else have skeptical hippo eyes? I don't know. I call bullshit. And I, for whatever reason, I know it sounds like I'm a hater on GSP. I just, I think the game plan was to always go after Bisbing. If Bisbing was never a champion, if Bisbing never knocked out Luke Rockhold on the eight day notice, I don't think GSP makes a comeback. I think it was the perfect dance partner, the perfect situation for George to come back, get a title at 85, and then get out. Um, I think this. I think it's an excuse, man. I do. I, uh, I'm i not buying it. Um, I wish I had some sort of confirmation. Not that, you know, I, we obviously share the same agency. And I'd love for them to give me the real deal on it. But uh, I just have, I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think it gives them a, a, a long layoff. I think it gives them a chance to maybe cut to 70 to see if he can do a super fight against Conor McGregor, which is what they want to do. Um, he has no desire to fight Woodley. He has no desire to fight Whitaker at all. So if I'm George St. Pierre, just to help the sport, you did great. You beat Bisbing. You're the two 
two weight division champion. You're one of the greatest of all time. Some think you're the greatest of all time. That's fair. Just say you're taking a leave of absence and you're relinquishing the belt so we can move on. So that's not hanging over 70, 85. It's not hanging over everyone's head. This money fight era, all this. That's the reason he came back. Just Let's just move on. You have this stomach issue now. So who knows when you can get back. Let Whitaker fight in Australia in February against Rockhold. Let the guys do their thing or against Kelvin, whatever you guys want to do. But let's just move on. Call it whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Stomach issue, weight cut issue. I don't care. If, uh, what it, was it, colitis? All right, colitis. that works for most of us, whatever you want to call it. But let's be real. You don't want to fight anyone, especially at middleweight. That's what it, this is. It's hard to prove you have it. I can't prove it. Oh. You can't see it. It hurts a bitch if you do have it. So if he does have it, you know, I, I hope he figures it out. But they call bullshit. How does that work, though? So if he says he has something, does he have to actually show proof? I mean, but they can't make him fight anyways, right? They couldn't it's make George, him take a so, fight. It's George, so, you know, he's one of the greatest of all time. He's on Mount Rushmore. He does what he wants. So when he goes, oh, I'm out. When you say, oh, I'm out, people go, what the fuck, man? That's bullshit. But if you go, oh, I have mm. colitis, then people go, oh, I can kind of understand that. But you're out for a long time. Mm. You're never fighting. Bro, you're never fighting at 85 again. Let's just dip out so we can continue to grow. Because right now there's these leashes on 55, on 85, on 70, and you're just holding us back. You're just holding us back. Let us go, man. Connor, too. You know, I, I I never throw shade at Connor, but we got to figure out what he's doing at 55. He's holding the division back, and there's all these guys that come on, man, come on, let's get back to some sort of normalcy. Let's go here, and there's just you're you're holding us back. George is doing the same thing. You did your thing, you did your work, you fought the exact guy you need to fight. Let us go. Okay, you got a stomach issue. You're out for fucking ever. Cool, man. You're out. You're not the champ anymore. And as a martial artist, I think he understands that. But his team is going to paint a different picture. It would look bad if he goes, oh, I'm out. I'm done, man. You know? Yeah. You People are going to be upset. And he wasn't the big pay-per-view draw we thought either. Remember that. That factors into this. I get pay-per-view numbers. Oh, shit. I would, I'm not the giant draw everyone thought I was. But, yeah, I call bullshit on the stomach issue. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I'll hear from it from my guys, but I don't care. As soon as I saw it, I went, ah, oh, come on. I would have came up with something else. My eye. You can always fake cancer. That's tough to prove. <laughs> Jeez, man. Too much? That's a little too much. <laughs> a little much. Put a bobo straw in your dick hole. You're out for a That's while. That's crazy, yeah. Could have photoshopped that. I had a million ideas, man, for it. <laughs> All right, what else we got? All right, so... You're talking about leashes. This is kind of uh, the opposite of that. Right? So it's Hiram Woodley said he would actually vacate his belt to go up to fight GSP. Not to prove that he's a pound for pound best, but to prove that he could beat George. Period. Uh, okay. Well, you it, the the caption might as well say Woodley says he will fight a pterodactyl because you never fight in GSP. GSP has a stomach issue. Mm-hmm. So he's not fighting for a very, very long time. So when you say, I'll fight GSP, cool. You want to fight Mike Tyson too? What else you want to do? You want to fight the Punisher? All these fictional characters? It doesn't matter. Why is this a headline? This should not even, this doesn't make sense. It makes zero sense. St. Pierre's not fighting for a very, very long time. So now it almost holds up the division, doesn't it? So it says, Woodley says he's debating moving up to middleweight to chase GSP fight. There's no chase. You're chasing this imaginable character who has a stomach issue. Who You're not the super fight. Woodley's not a draw. And again, you guys are like, oh, you always talk about pay-per-view fights and it's ruining the sport. I didn't make this fucking WWE world up. You guys did. I didn't ask for this. I just commentate on it. I just break down better fighters than me. That's my job now. That's what I do. So with Woodley, he's not a draw. So when you chase this money fight, that doesn't exist. So if you stay at 70, 
you know, if, if you want to you chase the money fight, it, not that it makes any sense, but <sighs> Diaz was probably his best shot for money site, but it didn't make a lot of sense. Other than that, Whitaker, him's not a money fight. But why are you leaving 70? You have a lot of work left to do at 70. And then I, I, he's not having the surgery again, right? He's, he's said it could, he's hoping that he won't need surgery. He's going to take time. So it says UFC President Dana White says the winner of UFC on Fox 26 headline between former champion Dos Anjos and Robbie Lawler uh, is next for Woodley. Those aren't money fights. But again, you're the champ. You should be the money fight. So you're chasing the money fight. That's what's going on here. You're chasing. Diaz was your one chance that realistically that would be the money fight. Um, GSP is not happening. They're not going to let you fight Whitaker. That doesn't make sense. That's not a super fight. It, it'd be confusing kind of educating the fans on why you're getting there. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You didn't clean out the division at 70. So he says, I'm open to any fight, anything that makes sense for me. But right now I'm not putting myself on a box saying – these are my next guys. Who else is doing that? What other division spies? My division is forced to actually compete against the number one contender. That doesn't mean you have to follow everyone. You can be the guy like Max Holloway. You can be the guy like Stipe. Or you can be the guy like DC who you own that division. There's nothing wrong with normalcy. There's nothing wrong with being the king of 70. What happens if you just murk everyone at 70 and become deniable? Because right now, and again, I, I like Woodley. I think he's an amazing fighter. Obviously, there's been some criticism of his past couple of fights. It's his dance partners, but in Maya and uh, Thompson, that's whatever. I still think you know he's he is the greatest 170 pounder in the world. But there's 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 no super fight with him. You're not a super fight guy yet. There's very few guys who are super fights. Um, you go through the champions. There's really not a ton of super fight guys. Conor McGregor's obviously the super fight. Nate Diaz, because of the the Conor McGregor rub off, is a super fight. Other than that, you know, there, there's not a ton of super fighters. GSP, obviously, because he's the the king, the what right kings. You got that super fight. Super fight means you're gonna. To me, when I hear super fight. To me, super fight is, does it break a million pay-per-views? If that breaks a million pay-per-views, we got a super fight on our hands. In this weird WWE entertainment money fight world. A money fight is, is does it break a million? Nope, you're out. GSP Bisming was not a super fight because it does not break a million. That did not garner a million dollars. A million bought by, sorry. What else you got? All right. Good news. Mark Hunt's cleared by that. You know those Vegas specialists that Dana wanted him to see? Yeah, because he went to like just the Australian specialists, right? And mm-hmm. Dana was like, nah, you got to come to my guys. Yeah. Flew out there. And according to his manager, he passed a little test and he's, he's cleared to fight. I'd love to see him fight. Uh, I'd love to see him versus Francis, to be honest. Yeah. Can Francis eat that left hook? I don't know. That's a great fight, though. He hasn't fought the Black Beast. Oh, no, the Black Beast beat him. I'm sorry. He beat the Black Beast. Uh, the heavyweight division is a lot of dinosaurs, man. Well, I'd love to see him versus Francis, though. You don't like this uh, Mark Hunt versus Verdum? That's what they're going for. Really? For Again? In Perth. I'll watch it. I love both guys. I'll watch it. For Verdum, though, he just did work on two guys. Overeem lost. There's some argument that a lot of people thought he beat Overeem. How Verdum doesn't get the next next title shot, he could use a little time off. If I'm Verdum, I'm saying title shot or bust, but I guess I'll fight Mark Hunt again, even though I knocked him out with a flying knee. But again, it's in Perth. But Fabricio, he just wants to fight. It, it's, a, it's always a fun fight, but we've, we've, we've seen that. Thank God he's all right, though. What else you got? Let's see. Oh, okay. So Ngannou's coach said that within a year, Ngannou has the ability to fight Joshua, 
or Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder? I mean, if if, uh, if he lands that fucking right hand or that uppercut, yeah, he would knock anyone in the world out. I don't care if you're Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder. If that were to land, he has so much power, he'd probably knock you out. Now, how would he do going against those world-class boxers? Not well. Joshua or Wilder, if they wanted to, could stick behind their jab and not get touched by Francis. It's just the way it is. It's just a different sport. Those guys are world-class at what they do. Now, if they came into the octagon, they wouldn't last 30 seconds. But in a boxing match, you don't think Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder have faced heavy-handed guys before? You don't think they've fought guys who have bombs? Yeah. They passed that test. They're both Olympic athletes. It's nothing new for them. Can he compete with them power-wise? Yes. Fundamentally, technique-wise, not a chance. What else you got? Uh, just the back and forth between Stipe and Ngannou. I'm sure you've seen this already. <laughs> so Stipe posted this. I love that picture of Stipe. It's just him saying, and still laughing with the belt. And then Ngannou replied back to him. Enjoy the belt while you can and stay. And say your farewell before your next fight. Ah, just dark shit, right? Hashtag and new. God, dog. I had to retweet that myself. Mm. You want to see something weird? I mean, it's just some dark. I mean, it's just like, eesh. he's just a scary individual. Mm. But he's not. You can tell he's nice. Met the guy. He's nice. Scary shit. What else you got? You said when you met him, he wasn't as big as you thought, right? I didn't think he was big as I thought. But then again, he's in clothes. I never think anyone's that big. I'm the opposite of Brian. I never think anyone's that jacked. Some football players will surprise me. Um, But no, I I did not think he was that big. But then when I saw him next to Over, you're like, that guy's fucking (laughs) huge. And I I text Rogan and said, hey, do you think France is that big? He goes, bigger, bigger than I thought. Even next over him, he's bigger than I thought. So I'll take everyone's word for it. He's enormous. But when I saw him, we fought over a hot dog. I actually gave it up to him. <laughs> I had wanted no part of that. Again, I was in goddamn Gucci boots and tight jeans. He's Francis in Ghana, so I did not want any. I relinquished that hot dog. You can tell how happy he is, too, to eat that hot dog. In the picture, he's happy as fuck. He got the last hot dog. I forgot what I ate. I wasn't on keto that night. What else you got? All right, I just saw this earlier, and I thought it was crazy, that Tim Sylvia is coming back to fight. Not in the UFC, obviously, but Submission Underground 6. That's uh, so that's chill submis- stuff, right? Yeah, so that's actually uh, jiu-jitsu in a cage, only, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So he's uh, he's going to go against Chael's jiu-jitsu coach. Uh, oh, sure, no, okay. Um... He looks big. Yeah, he's a big dude. I, last time I saw him, he was fighting um, my boy uh, Abe Wagner, and Abe beat him. And I think that's how Abe got the Ultimate Fighter. Boy, he is big. To me, Tim Sylvia, sauced or not, won the skit. I will. I will say this: as much as I'm dick riding Francis Ngano right now, a prime Tim Sylvia is the worst matchup in the world for Francis. A, 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 the Tim Sylvia that fought Andre Arlovsky and the Frank Mears fights, most likely if he fought smart with his footwork and his size, good chance he would beat Francis. Hmm. You, people forget Tim Sylvia is enormous with great footwork, amazing takedown offense, good cardio. Nightmare in his prime. Fucking nightmare to deal with. Hit like a Mack truck too. Don't want to see him do jiu-jitsu. That being said, I don't want to see this. What else you got? Uh, this is more like rumor stuff. But Conor McGregor was at a UK fashion show. God. And he was around like a mini dime pieces. Dog. <laughs> Look at that Versace Fashion Awards lineup. Good night. For sure, I'm butting your suit there in that picture. But look at <laughs> Rita. Dude, so, I've yeah. seen Rita or in person. Beautiful. Jaw dropping. So Rita actually put on her Twitter. She said date night. She had pictures with Connor. It said date night? She date knows night. he's married and shit? She has a boyfriend too. So look at these pictures. Eesh. That's, God, 
She looks really hot there. Dog, right? she is a straight Australian. Put another shrimp on the Barbie smoke show. <laughs> It's just, the problem is it's just such so disrespectful to Connor's girl that he has a baby with. So because of that, his boy Artem tweeted back. I love Artem. Sorry, Rita. Burgers are nice, but not when a man has steak at home. I love that. <laughs> Shout out to Artem. I love that. God, she is just a smoke. Show. She is really, really hot. So Conor McGregor taking a picture with Rita is the equivalent of your girl taking a picture with Cam Newton or like Steph Curry. And, you just, and then think if Steph Curry took a picture of the girl and was like, date night. And like, God damn it. You can't compete with it. Even though his wife is beautiful, it's Rita motherfucking Aura. I mean, she is. Look, God, night. Titties all out and shit. Her okay, yeah. beautiful brown skin. Her boob looks really good right there. <laughs> That's not creepy know. at all, Chip. I'm just saying. It just does. All right. It's well, very, hey, very... serial killer. Would you like to wear a face as a wig? Her boob looks really good there, guys. It does. Just one boob. Okay, well. I'd marry that boob. Yeah, all right. Oh. You're certified psycho there. That confirms psycho. it. But, um, um, what else got you? Yeah, well, uh, let's help you out here. Yeah, she's delicious. Yeah, she's hot. Delicious. Uh, for sure don't post that to a married man, though. What else you got? <laughs> I think that's pretty much it, man. Oh, this is a possible fight coming up is Derek Lewis versus Marcin. First of all, Derek Lewis, best social media in the UFC as a current fighter, best social media. Um, Tabura, you know, I hope Derek Lewis goes in there and murks him. Uh, I'm a big Derek Lewis fan. Mm -hmm. Is that it? That's pretty much it. We have fights coming up, though. We do have some fights coming up. Boom. Uh, Before I break the um, the Rigondeaux Lomachenko fight. Um, Rigandau is a defensive fighter, looks for the knockout shot, undefeated, world champion. Uh, even though Lomachenko is only 8-1 or 9, whatever the fuck he is, I think his volume punching, his angles, I think he gets a finish here. And he established himself as the number one fighter uh, boxer in the world. Again, I can't emphasize enough, you guys need to watch this special talent. That's Saturday night. So let's move on. That's boxing. Now mm-hmm. we got UFC fight night. Uh, Fresno, California, shout out to Fresno. Bulldogs up in the house. Cub Swanson, Brian Ortega, uh, it's Fox Sports 1, the main card. You know, not a great card. Uh, I, I, there's, so, there's two amazing fights on this, but other than that, it's whatever. Uh, I should say three really good fights. Um, nothing that's going to blow your hair back. The, the common fan's not going to be into it, but the main event's a great one. So you got Cub Swanson, um, who's always a, a staple in the, the division, and then Brian Ortega. T City, who's undefeated, um, you know his last wins. He has he has three finishes late in the rounds. T City always worries me because he's beat some very good guys. You know he beat Diego Brandao, he beat uh, Tavares, which I thought was a horrible matchup for him, um, and then he beat Clay Guida, knocked him out actually uh, f- with twenty seconds left in the fight, mind you, and then he pulled a submission out of his ass against uh, Mosiana. My problem with these late finishes and stuff like that, and he, he's, he's, he's facing good guys, but he's not facing the upper, upper echelon guys. It's the same thing that worries me about um, Gaethje is when you get to a certain level, those antics don't work. You, you get to a certain level with those upper echelon guys, they're really not going to give you the opportunity to finish them that late. You know, Cub Swanson, the guy who's been in there with the best ever. He's the most skilled guy I've ever seen in, in practice. I've never seen anything like it. He's beat some of the very, very best in Dustin Poirier, Jeremy Stevens. He, you know, he lost to Frank Yeager. He beat, lost to Max Holloway. But you know, he had his, to me, fight of the year 2016, his Doho Choi fight. Um, he's beaten uh, Lobov, which is decision. He, ca- he outclassed him, but still. Um, he's fought some of the, the best of the best. He hasn't beat like the upper up ech- uh, echelon guys. He's always beat right below. You know, he's lost to the Chad Mendezes of the world, the Ricardo Lamas, the Frank Yeagers, Max Hallways. Beats everyone else. So where's Ortega in all this? Again, what worries about Ortega is he's beat good guys, hasn't beat the best guys, and he's pulled out these Hail Marys in every fight. When do those Hail Marys stop working? Because a lot of these fights, like the Tavares, he, if that went to decision, he would have lost. Um, the Clay Guida probably would have lost. That uh, Mosiana probably would have lost. They go decision, but he's pulling him out. And he's staying undefeated, so he's doing something right. 
So his team's probably like, dude, we're winning, so keep doing what you're doing. I just think at a certain level, and Cub is at that high level, you're going to run into some problems. Um, I'm biased in this one. I'm very close to Brian Ortega. He's a member of uh, alumni here for Big Brown Breakdown. You guys heard his story. Amazing story. Amazing upbringing. It's one of our most successful podcasts. Um, Henry Gracie, his head coach, is like a brother to me. So if you're betting on this, you probably should turn this off. I'm super pro Brian Ortega. I think this is a tough matchup for Brian. Cub Swanson does everything great. Uh, he's well-versed. It's going to be fucking tough to catch him in that T-City triangle, especially late. He's been in there. He wants to get into wars with you. Ortega's down for those wars. Um, but I'm rooting for Brian in this one. I'm rooting for Brian in this one. I love Cub. I love Brian. I want to see close with Brian. Um, I want to see where he's at. We haven't seen where he's at with these other guys. He's been able to pull it out last second and pull off a submission. He's been the T-City. How long does that go? Can he do against Cub Swanson? I would say no. So he needs to fight a smarter fight. The one area he needs to improve in to become a champion. Because if he were to fight Max Holloway right now, we can't just rely on those antics and stuff like that because Max Holloway's not going to play that game. He's Max Holloway. He's good at everything. So is Cub. So is Lamas. So, you know, Frankie. There's a lot, a lot of good things uh, that these guys do to get him to this level. Ortega has holes. And, I, and I'm worried about it. But as far as fighter's heart goes, he's right up there with the best of the world. Jiu-Jitsu, right up there, best of the world. Striking, not there yet. And Cubs is a world-class striker. Can Cub keep it on his feet and his angles? We've seen he has, he's been able to do that before. Uh, T-City does have that magic where, where his guard is uh, second to none. Um, I'm, in all honesty, I'm, I'm worried about T-City's striking level at the upper echelon. And we'll find out. I don't know because it's worked. We'll find out against Cub Swanson. Then we'll go from there. But I'm rooting for Cub, uh, Brian Ortega here. Mm. Max Holloway be, would be a, a tough task for him. But if you were to beat a Cub Swanson, there, there's no argument. you got to give the guy a shot, especially a main event. And Brian hasn't been five rounds either. So there, And Cub's been for five rounds many, many times. He's fought for titles, done stuff like that. So it's a huge test for Brian to see where he's at. He's also young, so win or lose, he has a lot to learn. There's but, one right here. That's a long time ago. That's an RFA. Doesn't yeah. count. Uh, yeah, it doesn't count. I mean the UFC. <laughs> different level. When you're going five rounds with a world-class guy in the UFC and you're the main event, it's a different responsibility. Even though it's just the FS1 card, it's a UFC fight night, you have some responsibilities at the main event. So it's his first one, so let's see how he reacts to that. But, you know, you, again, if you, you can go back and listen to the, the big round breakdown with him. His story is amazing. If there's anyone who can deal with this pressure and he's never out of the fight, it's Brian Ortega, which it's been working this far. So let's see what happens. Uh, and really, and it's no disrespect to anyone else on the card. The only other one that I'd spend time breaking down would be uh, Marias and Sterling. It's it's really soon for Sterling. Marias is a guy that came from World Series. Um, you know, they've kind of thrown him straight to the dogs. You know, he had John Dotson beat by split decision. Uh, Sansa was his first fight. Think about it. It was his first fight in UFC. But now he's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven time, eight time world champion from World Series of Fighting. So of course you're gonna get thrown to the, the to the dogs. Um, and a Sansa, I thought he beat a Sansa that was in Brazil and that was his first fight in the UFC. And then they give him John Dotson. Sterling coming off his last uh, win, which was which was a big one for uh, Sterling against Hennon Burrell. That's a weathered old Hennon Burrell. He was at a catch weight, 140 pounds. Um, again, this is only three rounds. I I, I just I, I think Morass has that that special ability to get it done. Um, I always give you guys fight picks. I hate doing it, especially when it's a guy like Brian Ortega. I will take Brian Ortega via submission. It's the only way I see him win in the fight. I don't know how he's going to get it done. He's going to jump to a flying triangle. He's going to do something cool. He's going to surprise everyone. We're going to be talking about it. I got Brian Ortega by uh, submission. Unconventional, crazy submission. And then I'll take uh, Marlon Marais by TKO uh, third round. Boom. Enjoy the Boom. fights, ladies and gentlemen. I was a chatty Cathy today. <laughs> uh, got to get ready. I got the live fight tonight at the Fan comedy questions? store. Oh, fuck. We got fan questions. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time I forget them. Okay. Christian B. Uh, 435 asked, question for Brendan. 435. I always wonder why they do that. All right, what do you got? <laughs> what, would, what would your game uh, 
plan B against such a ferocious opponent like Francis. And Chin, I believe you're a great producer of the show, but we need more background on you and what you do outside of the show. Chin needs his own segment on the show. No, thank you. You mean like Chinder? <laughs> yeah. We saw how that went. Fabulous. Now, But that's fucking finished because you saw Rita Ora's <laughs> boob went. I, like, I, her, want I like her boob there. We'll be more like I, Dexter. Want, I want that boob there. <laughs> no, no, All right. Yes. Well, that's strange. <laughs> Um, I'm down for a segment for Chin or MJ if you guys think of something, but it'd have to be consistent, a fun one. It's hard. They just happen organically. You can't really write those. Um, but the first part of the question, what would your game plan be against such a ferocious Run, opponent? run. I would never be in there. However, um, if for some weird reason I had to fight the guy, it, it would be I'm either so far out or I'm so far in. I'm never in that middle area where he can land one of those bombs from uh, Cameroon. So my 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 whole theme for that camp would be let let's try and get this dude to break. Let's see if we can break him just through pure pressure, tenacity, and will. And my my forehead is gonna be in his chest. I'm never giving him a break. I my card your cardio. And I'm sure Steve is gonna follow this game plan. Your cardio better be second to none that night because. I'm willing to go five rounds and walk through hell to beat this guy, and it's not going to be a short night for him. I'm going to make it a living hell. I'm never letting him get off. I'm always rushing to him. I'm always rushing, 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 closing the distance. My head's going to be in his chin, under hooks. If it's boring, I don't give a flying fuck. I'm doing what I can do to drag this guy to the later rounds. Let's see if he can swim. Let's see if uh, Francis can swim. That'd be the only game plan. That's literally the only way to beat him. Or bring out the bubble straw. (laughs) <laughs> or put a bobo straw up your dick hole so you don't have to fight it. Or if I'm Verdum, I jump to half guard. Okay. Ryan dot K part asked, "What fighting style or strategy is best going against a guy like Ganu? Who has the best matchup against him?" So I guess you just that. told you that. What else you got? So Louis A Lopez underscore G asked, "Given the, that Max Holloway got Aldo in the same exact way as last time, do you think it, it was a waste of a fight? Who do you see being his toughest fight?" Uh, I th- you know, I think, you know, with Frank getting hurt, it's not a waste of a fight, and Aldo was getting ready. And, you know, Aldo is the the greatest of all time, so he, he does deserve that shot. And now we know, you know, it's over. So it's not a waste of a time, but, you know, it's entertaining. Not waste. Not, who else would you do? What else you got? Ryan Boom 135 asked, What do you think about the fact that Overeem says he has no injuries? He's fine. For sure, some brain trauma, I'd say. Hashtag UFC 218. Yeah, that's the problem with the sport. No, I'm good, man. Excuse me, sir. You got hit with the hardest uppercut I've ever seen in my life. You're not fine. Because you look in the mirror and you're like, man, lips a little swollen, but I feel fine. Your brain's not fine. When your brain goes through that sort of traumatic car crash from Cameroon, you're not fine. But that's the problem with the sport. No, I'm good, man. I could, Who's next? That's the problem. That's the exact fucking problem. Mike DeBarge asked, not related to this fight, but I'm an amateur boxer, kick, excuse me, kickboxer, and I've had two smokers. I have almost no recollection of the fights. Is this Ooh. just nerves or has Brendan ever experienced that? Maybe I just need more alpha brain. No, that's fine. You ever uh, been in a crazy situation and it just goes by so fast, like in, you know, fast forward motion? When you know you're getting good and comfortable in the cage or in sports too, I remember in football, I'd get through games. You remember certain aspects of it? It's almost like a drunken night. You remember certain fun things? You don't remember the whole night. Uh, it's same with fighting. When you first start, it's a you're in a blender. It's, and you remember getting your hand raised, and you remember maybe the one punch that land, but you don't remember all the things about it. Uh, it's just getting comfortable in there. There will become a time – if he keeps fighting through your career where things will slow down, you start to see things, you can feel the the mat, you can hear the crowd, you can feel the cage, you're comfortable with the lights. That, that's beca- that's called experience. It's just experience. In football, I'll never forget, I remember, maybe it was the CSU game, not to my senior year, where guys were all flying, but to me it was in slow motion, like I was Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man. And that's when you get comfortable and you have experience. Some some guys it happens right away. Some guys it takes twenty fights. Some guys it takes ten fights. For Francis, it's taken four fights and homeless. But for some guys, it just happens quicker than others. When you watch the tapes, does it bring it back instantly? Or when is I it watch still the weird? tapes, I I go, who the fuck is that guy? I watch the tapes, I go, I don't know that guy. People, uh, I'll, I'll see replays on TV or highlights on my phone. I'm like, I, I mean, I remember the camps. I remember being in there thinking what I was thinking and certain aspects of the fight. And obviously I remember the fight, but 
I look at that guy and go, I don't know that guy. Well, okay. Yeah. MBNRD90 asked, who would you be more afraid to fight? A peak health, hashtag golden snitch list, Brock Lesnar, or fresh off uppercut from Africa, Francis Gano? Uh, I'd be more, I'd be more scared of Francis because Brock, we, at least I know what kind of animal I'm dealing with. He's a complete nightmare, but I know I'm probably a better boxer than he is with Francis. It's we're in the unknown. I don't know. My game plan would be stick my forehead in the middle of his chest, get an underhook and do work and try and wear him out. He might have better cardio than Kane. He might have better cardio than me. So now we're all fucked, but at least I know with Brock, I'm going to have better cardio. I'm better boxing. I can rely on those two. I can find a way to win. With Francis, I have no idea what we're dealing with, and that's fucking scary. Mm. Give me two more. Big fan of Stipe. This is from Brother Wolf 87 Big fan of Stipe, also from Cleveland, but I don't like this matchup for him. How do you see Stipe beating Francis? Also, I'm on day three of keto. I like sweets. What are your f- sweet snacks on keto? Uh, so we'll start with Stipe, uh, just what I said, but yeah. what Stipe can't, Stipe is going to have to get in with, uh, head movement. He can't kind of stay still and eat those same shots he did with, you know, with, uh, with Overeem and stuff like that. He also has to be dynamic. He, he has to make Francis worry about the takedown. I don't care if you shoot a single leg and it's unsuccessful, at least know that Francis is, has to consider your takedown as a threat. Otherwise, that dude who's homeless five years ago wants your exact crown is going to walk through you and eat whatever shot you have to land that Cameroon uppercut. But if he has to worry about a takedown at all times, maybe his timing's off. Maybe he's hesitant and you can get off your combinations. But if you go in there in a boxing match and think he's going to chase you like Verdum or chase you like over him, you're sorely mistaken. you got to wrestle and I'm not saying you have to successfully drag him down to the mat, but you have to work. You got to make him work. And take when he has to lower his hands and get underhooks and pick you up, even though in the judge's eyes you're not successful, it's a success because you're making him work. You're making him work a little harder. You make him stay in there a little longer. You're taking a little bit of his power bar down every time he has to get those underhooks. Every time. But the number one thing, if I'm fighting Francis, cardio, 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 cardio. I'm working with wrestlers nonstop. It's a motherfucking wrestling clinic. Uh, the keto sweet tooth, uh, fat fudge. It's sweet, not a lot of sugar. Spray whipped cream in your mouth like a fat kid. That's about it, man. Everyone asks about your keto diet. Gar- garner Everyone down. Wants you to release garner diet. down on it. I'm I'm doing a. A keto box, a subscription keto box oh, with yeah. on what? it. Yeah, with on it that comes out uh, oh, yeah. probably in February. Cool. Where, where it's, it's going to come with a pamphlet of what you can eat, what you should be eating. You're going to get keto products in there. My favorite keto products. It's going to be dope when it gets dropped. I want one. Yep. <laughs> Boom. Sweet. One more. At Michael Nixon asked, what happens with Henry Sejudo? He won his last fight but was pretty underwhelming. Does he get his title shot as his next fight? It's not. A, it's underwhelming because the the circumstances of the fight card. It was a good performance by him. Anthony, Pe- or I'm sorry, Sergio Pettis just isn't at that level yet. Um, it it the the thing is, if, even if Cejudo went in there and knocked Pettis out in two seconds, that's probably not the next fight. Um, the fight is TJ and DJ. That's the fight. Um, it's really the only fight I want to see. Is anyone foaming at the mouth? See Cejudo, Mighty Mouse again? No. But he should be the next in line. Depending on what, remember, Benavidez beat Cejudo. So Benavidez has been out. People forget, but Benavidez is ranked number one still. So don't forget about Joey Benavidez. He also has the best uh, dress attire and taste he does. at Flyweight, too. And has a wife with the best booty. Shout out to Megan O'Leary. Um, Love you guys. So that's it, man. Boom, boom, boom. Feel like I was a chatty cat on this big round breakdown. It was a long one. Um, still haven't eaten today. What can you do, man? Got to get ready for the Fire and Kid Live tonight at the Commie Store. A few tickets left by the time you guys are listening. It's probably sold out or it's too late. Um, but for me, Syracuse next Wednesday. See you guys soon. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two shows each night. I'm working my tail off for you guys. Buffalo, Helium, TFATK.com for tickets. Then, what I say? January, Portland. Get your minds right. Portland, Portland. Here we go. 
I'm in Portland. Just announced tickets are available at tfatk.com. January 11th, 12th, and 13th, Helium Comedy Club, Portland. I'm coming to see you. Let's do it. Great coffee, great food, white people and beanies. I love you guys. Let's do it. Portland, January 11th through the 13th. I'm a coming. And then I'll see the big one, January 19th, Wilbur Theater. That bitch is almost sold out. Sells out. Maybe I'll let Francis punch me in the face on stage. Psych. Just kidding. I'd never do that. Um, but there are tickets left. And I am having a very, very special guest. Winky face. Uh, that night opened up for me. I'm so excited. So fucking excited. Wilbur Theater, Boston, January 19th. Get you some. The night before UFC 220. TFATK.com for tickets. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the boxing and UFC this week. Weekend, as always, bigger, browner, batter. I'm out.